Thank you, Max. And um, once again, thank you uh, to the entire NADA team. Uh, NADA House is uh, for our first time participating and been really wonderful experience. Thank you for that. Uh, all great team at NADA. Uh, I'm Brooke Dorsch. I'm the founder of uh, now, what is now Emerson Dorsch, was previously Dorsch Gallery. Uh, I started the gallery in Miami in 1991, uh, showing a lot of alternative, um, sort of an alternative space that uh, became real when we moved uh, after nine years to Wynwood, was the first gallery in Wynwood area. Um, and then later I was joined by my uh, wife, Tyler Emerson Dorsch, and we renamed the, the gallery Emerson Dorsch. Um, and uh, now have moved from the Wynwood area in 2015 to uh, the Little Haiti area of Miami, uh, where we've been now for almost uh, five years or four years, actually. Um, anyway, and I'm joined here by Ernesto Gutierrez Moya, who is uh, the artist we represent and have been working with since 2019. Um, and he has a, her, his presentation, as Max said, in, at Not A House, solo presentation. And then assisting me with translation is our director, Yvette Yanis de Castillo. Hi, Yvette. Say hello. Let me make sure we can see you there. And, um, and thank you, everybody, for joining. So um, it's a little bit about myself there. And, um, and Ernesto, uh, you've... Uh, been here in Miami, were born in Cuba, uh, and moved to Miami in 2016, as, as Max mentioned. So you've been here about five years. Um, tell us a little bit about, um, a little bit of your background in, in Cuba, like, you know, uh, the area there and, and what brought you, I guess, to the United States or something like this. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Ernesto Gutierrez Moya, soy artista visual. Vengo de Cuba, como decía Brooke, hace cinco años que estoy aquí. Um, hi everyone, my name is Ernesto Gutierrez Moya. I'm a visual artist and as Brooke was saying, I came to the United States, to Miami um, in 2016, so I've been here about five years. Dentro de estos cinco años he podido realizar varias posiciones, he podido realizar varios shows que me complementaron con los estudios que tuve primariamente en Cuba en la Academia de Arte San Alejandro. In these last five years that I've been here, I've participated in several exhibitions, um, and those exhibitions have allowed me the opportunity um, to bring into play um, the background and the technical skills that I gained uh, in Cuba during my studies at the Academy of San Alejandro. Ya, yeah. eh, estuve, como se mencionó hace un momento, por hacer varios shows en magazine, en diferentes individual o grupo de show, y hasta que comencé a trabajar, no, no, no diría que a trabajar, pero formar parte de este equipo de Emerson Dorch Gallery y seguir así, así a estos proyectos que estamos hasta ahora, como en Art House. In the short time that I've been here, I've had um, the opportunity to participate in group shows, um, some solo projects. Uh, eventually leading me um, to the collaboration that I now have uh, with Emerson Dorsch Gallery um, and the Nada House exhibition. All right. So we, uh, as we move along here, we're going to show some of uh, Ernesto's uh, earlier works and see how they sort of shifted um, from more, I would say, architectural works to much more landscape and, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So if you wanna move to some of the first works and we'll, we'll talk about, these are some of the first works that we saw when we first met, your, met you at your studio. Um, and uh, if you wanna talk a little bit about what, what, your, what your goal on these works were, they were much more, um, I guess, architecturally focused and uh, yeah, uh, see if you can, sort of describe where you were going here and then how that shifted as you started moving along. Eh, el primer trabajo sí tenía un sentido más arquitectónico con una idea de captar más la simplicidad de la arquitectura. 
So the, my previous work or my, my earlier work while I was in Cuba, um, I focused primarily in capturing more of the aesthetics of the architecture um, and the simplicity um, found in that architecture and my surroundings. Era cantar unos espacios metafísicos a través de la simplicidad, como mencionaba antes, darle misterio, ambigüedad. I've always been interested in capturing um, with almost uh, the idea of the metaphysical uh, and the mystery of these places um, and the architecture that represents them. In estos primeros trabajos, la naturaleza, um, landscape, estaba representado de la forma más simple. In these earlier works, um, the way that I captured nature um, was with a more simple approach. Cuando vine a Miami, en Florida, pude realizar varios viajes a través de West Palm Beach to Homestead, a uh, Weber Plate. When I first got to Miami uh, in 2016, uh, I was able to navigate um, with more of the landscape um, that was available in the city. Um, I'm going to jump in at times, Ernesto, and I'm just going to bring a little more backstory to people as I'm translating. Um, he was able to also um, take journeys within the state of Florida that started um, changing the way that he was approaching his work. Right. And I was just going to say, uh, I think when we first met you, you had only just started really getting into uh, visiting around things, places like the Everglades um, and um, some of the native springs and the, the ocean, the islands, the Keys. Uh, and that's where you started seeing a lot more tropical fauna coming in, Fairchild Tropical Garden. There's a garden in Miami uh, that's known uh, worldwide called Fairchild Tropical Garden, which is houses one of the largest collections of tropical plants and uh, that was set, set up for many years. And it's a wonderful place to see all these different examples of, uh, of exotic uh, plants from all over the world. But I don't know if yeah, that, that was one of the things I remember that, mm -hmm. that you, we talked about when you first came in. And, the, and a lot of it is in the influence of water uh, in Miami, the abundance of water and the, um, uh, the bodies of water that are around Miami start to really influence a lot of, a lot of your work. Um, I don't know if you want to yeah, add, add, add to that. <laughs> yeah, I can do it. No yeah. worries. Realmente el agua ya había influenciado mi obra desde que estaba en Cuba. Cuando vi la obra, el libro, con, lo, con la posibilidad que tenía en ese momento de David Hoffman. So, um, water has always been an influence in my work. Um, of course, coming from Cuba. Um, but I was also looking at referencing or being inspired by artists such as David Hockney. Yeah. Le ha estado trabajando siempre dándole un sentido de misterio. De, eh, es igual que la arquitectura, le ha dado un sentido de misterio de ambigüedad y complementarla con la arquitectura, como al igual estoy complementando ahora con un landscape. So water has always been in relationship with the ambiguity um, that presented itself in my work through architecture. Um, and also now um, being here, it's also involving landscape, been more aware of the landscape. Como mencionaba antes, que había realizado unos viajes en Florida, no solamente me llamó la atención el environment, la vegetación, sino que me empezó a llamar y me motivó también Eh, los estanques y las fuentes uh, hacen nuevas ideas, hacen nuevos bosquejos, como lo que se vio en Emerson Dorsch de The Pond, que fue la, una obra presentada aquí de la show. Being introduced to the environment in Florida, I started paying attention also, um, not only to the landscape and not only to the relationship with water, um, but also the different um, structures or, or sets of, of bodies of water that you encounter in Florida, such as the man-made um, lakes and the artificial fountains. So that started um, becoming something that I captured in my work um, and it was later uh, included 
uh, in the pond, which was exhibited at Emerson Dorsch. So and this, uh, this is a photo from the installation here at the gallery, which was earlier this year. So that, this, this is where you can see a little bit of the evolution of the work. So when we first met Ernesto, there was one style, but he had, uh, we, when we approached him about doing a show, he really had this idea um, that he presented to us of, of taking something that was doing something on a very massive scale. Um, so the painting that you see here is uh, approximately 60 feet long. Uh, that's uh, and about uh, nine feet tall, eight, eight or nine feet tall. Um, and uh, it's a, in a wide angle shot here. Uh, but he wanted to have that full immersion effect when you walked into it uh, with the reference. And, and uh, yeah, this was his first project with us and uh, it was quite a, ambitious. And I don't know if we didn't put it in here, but you, if you see um, images with people standing on the painting actually really dwarfs everything. And, and that's at the same time as when we started talking about Nada at the same time as this was coming up. But we'll talk a little bit more about this, but this painting, which is called The Pond, um, we got some detailed shots of here, really started to become this landscape that you, uh, of mixing all these different elements from around your trips in Florida and putting them all into this like complete surrounding water so, as almost as if you're on your own island, correct? And uh, so I don't know if you want to talk, uh, elaborate a little bit more about how your process was when you did that and, or yeah, or uh, yeah. That's, if I captured it right, right <laughs> there. Uh, the pond fue una idea, una meta que tenía a realizar y Nunca tuve un día fijo, so hasta que un día empecé y decidí comenzar en plena pandemia, fue del año pasado. So for this project, The Pond, I, I, I started by not setting any rules or guidelines um, to how I would come up with the concept. Um, and it was just one day after doing these trips that I began um, the work and it actually happened um, right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, yeah. in, in the pond fue como decía una meta bastante difícil porque en ella pude experimentar el cambio en mi obra pude ya que estuve dos años solamente dibujando y la obra todavía tenía un sentido más flat y aquí pude experimentar y darle más cuerpo a las formas y el contenido de mi obra uh, the pond for me and, and especially happening during the pandemic was a time that I could uh, apply uh, the technical skills of my earlier work, which were more flat, um, more rigid. And here I was able to apply that same technique, but also give it more layers um, and, and put more energy into the work. In this este, este project, I have to say it again, it was a great project to realize pero me dio también el conocimiento y de buscar más lo que es el concepto de la pintura y de todo su posibilidad. With this project, um, I knew that it was ambitious getting into the project um, and, and approaching a, a work of this scale gave me the opportunity um, to learn more about the process of painting um, and to understand um, what I was doing through this process of painting. Yeah, so and th these are moving forward now. So let so we'll take that from from the pond and now get into Nada. So when we when we first exhibited the pond and then we had the idea to to become uh, participate in in Nada House, uh, the first thing we said is we needed to to get you an idea of what it's like on this island and. Uh, it, for a reference, I, I grew up in New York and for, I lived 18, 19 years in New York and I, I had never been to Governor's Island previously before moving to Miami. Um, so it, 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 I, did, I knew of Governor's Island and I'd been to the Statue of Liberty, so I've seen it, but I, I had never been actually on there and experienced the houses and what the history of the island was. So I know 
part of the thing that we re really appealed to us is that you really wanted to go in and do some research about the island, uh, do a site visit, uh, and then uh, then we then we move forward with with you know figuring out exactly how you were going to take your ideas from the photographs. We had somebody come out and do photographs beforehand. Talk a little bit about that that process on how how you you approach that, and then we'll get a little more. In. <laughs> yeah, es un poco funny porque este proyecto ya tenía pensado hacer esta idea de ser una isla con una vista de una colina, pero todavía no tenía la idea clara de qué isla representar hasta que Emerson Dodge me habló de este proyecto en Alhau y empecé a investigar sobre la isla y su historia. So it's interesting when um, Emerson Dorsch approached me uh, for this project that I had already been considering the idea of an island um, for a work. I uh, hadn't quite figured out how this was going to be represented um, through the paintings, uh, but having the opportunity to work with the gallery and to work with a concept of the history of, of Governor's Island for Not a House, I started to, to develop um, sort of a language, a visual language for what these paintings would represent. Al estar investigando sobre este proyecto, a la vez está investigando sobre la obra de Peter Brugger y la obra de las Torres de Babel, mm -hmm. que fue la que me inspiró principalmente a hacer este proyecto. Yeah. Um, during this time, when I was studying the history of Governor's Island, I had also been um, studying the painting of Brugel and um, the, specifically the Tower of Babel. Um, so it kind of put these ideas together for this project. Quería representar algo monumental, algo glorioso como era la Torre Babel, algo mitológico, y pude captar toda la información de Gordon Island para incorporarla dentro de mi propia isla, de mi propio Gordon Island que yo creé. I wanted to represent something in the painting um, that was just as iconic um, as the Tower of Babel by Bruegel. Um, and I was able, with the history of Governor's Island, to captivate um, that same strength through these paintings. So, so what specific history, in, in, for a little more specific, which, which piece do you, what, what part of the history really made you want to include that, do you know? Tiene bastante bueno, hay una bastante historia. Me sorprendió algo tan pequeño como pudo haber pasado tantas cosas, pero cuando estuve investigando sobre ella, me llamó mucho la atención de la de la quema de un molino. Repite eso, Ernesto. So, cuando estaba investigando sobre la historia de Gordon Island, me interesó mucho la quema de un molino. Okay. So while I was en molino, es lo que estás diciendo, ¿verdad? Yeah. Okay, so while I was um, researching the history of Governor's Island, one of the, the visual concepts that really attracted me um, was the history of the windmill that they had on the island. La creación de, de colinas, la creación de una mansión que un gobernador hizo, pero se demolió, entonces no quedaron rastros y es como una pequeña leyenda que quedó ahí. The idea of the legend uh, behind Governor's Island, where you had um, these mansions that were built for, for governors that would then be completely um, eradicated and, and they would still present themselves within the history of the island. Una cosa que me interesó bastante fue el lago alrededor de Governor's Island, que en, cuando, durante la guerra, Cuando bajaba la marea, las mujeres llevaban un su los sueros de leche hacia los enfermos. Y por eso se llama Boren, mira, el lado se llamaba. One of the um, stories from the history of the island that really interested me um, was the idea that you had this um, land mass and, and during um, the time where it was used for sort of a quarantine, when the, <clears throat> when the waters would go down, the women would be able to take um, milk or take uh, food to the sick that were on the island. También representé el cementerio que, que estaba en el tercer panel, que no, no pude tratar de encontrar una imagen específica, entonces tuve que recrearlo a partir de toda la historia, como la fiebre amarilla y la guerra que pasó, independencia, 
que pasó en, en la misma isla que utilizaban como la isla como centro de diría yo como sí como centro militar como centro militar yeah go, go back to the, the previous page so these these now are the images from from the installation and and uh as you can see there's sort of like the island that is depicted within the paintings um and there's a lot of i don't know we should have put in some more detailed shots i don't think we have any of that but we we encourage everybody to go go visit till it's still uh since it'll still be up uh in october 1st uh if you haven't seen it to really look closely at some of the the details that are coming in there but one of the things that's very specific is that you decided to after seeing the rooms you really there were some things that you really wanted to make sure were referenced that were referenced in the painting that were being able to see in the room so we i think you really wanted to have the the paintings almost appear to be windows to the outside that so they had to be on that first floor they had to have like they almost look like their corner windows and in, into a different landscape going outside so uh, is, is that that's that's part of the intention there like mirrored windows and yeah quise que hubiera una conexión entre la misma ventana y la misma obra por eso que traté de que fueran del mismo tamaño so he really wanted to create a relationship like brooks said um with the exterior of the island um with the landscape that was in fact influencing the painting but all uh, in the way that he decided to install the paintings um in relationship to the architecture was almost to allow the works to become additional windows within the room correct mm. yeah we really we really like that idea and um and I, I think that's really made it very successful we were uh, I, i've been very happy with the way that it, it came out in that that sense because it really you you turn around and you're you're starting to look at two different realities there and i think that's that's really interesting and uh because the yours are, are much more um and when you apply these paintings there's a little more of a uh, they're they're not taking from any images or anything like that that's much more fantastical or, or something that's coming from your imagination to push to put them in there but there's a lot of references to things that you've seen on the island in there. So uh, I don't know if you want to elaborate a, a little bit. Uh, uh, it's a harder question. So we're next, so <laughs> I think it's interesting that you bring that up, Brooke, because one of the thing, one of the topics that Ernesto has always discussed as the vein of his work has been this idea of ambiguity or of him sort of taking these explorations of histories or landscapes or movements and then sort of compiling them all into these compositions. Um, so basically the journey exists within his work. Um, it's almost like it's, it's, it's an ever um, growing or ever developing story. Um, one of the things that Ernesto mentioned <clears throat> um, previously was that Although he researched um, Governor's Island and all of the different um, sort of moments that happened on the island, um, that he wasn't able to find actual documentation of the cemetery or the governor's mansion that had been destroyed. So for him to represent these um, in the paintings was really important, even if it was just sort of concepts that he was creating on his own based on the writings that he read um, about the history of these places and these moments and these people. Eh, cuando creé este, este proyecto, no quise separar de Found the Island, este, este proyecto de mi obra anterior. So, quise mantenerlo como que tú hubieras un viaje hasta que que llegaste a la colina y encontraste la isla, es por eso que traté de representar como la vista de una colina hacia la isla. He wanted to represent or rather he didn't want to separate his previous work um such as the pond from this new body of work. Um he really wanted to continue that journey um and the work which is titled I found the island for him that was really important to have that journey where he he gets um, to the island and in fact uh, finds the island. Este proyecto no solamente tuvo resultado eh, 
formal, sino que también personal, porque a la hora de visitar físicamente Gordon Island, yeah. y es como se llama el título, Found the Island, y yo fui realmente a la isla, pude descubrir físicamente yeah. su historia. Y eso influyó en mi trabajo después de, de este proyecto. So, for him, an accomplishment um, of, of having the opportunity to do this project um, was the fact that he did um, find the island. Um, he was able to create the work and then experience a landscape that informed the work. And, and now thinking about it in retrospect, this experience has led them to create his new body of work. Que este nuevo eh, grupo de, de trabajo que estoy haciendo este nueva, esta nueva serie, diría yo, lo siento más como que estoy trabajando dentro de la isla, como que cada escenario parte de de la isla que la visité solamente en un sueño o en algo en estas esta posiciones de, de imágenes de Diego. So now for for this new work and this is the the slide that we're showing now, he's looking at the compositions or the narrative and the paintings as he's working within the island, whereas before he was um, imagining these fantastic moments, but now he feels like he's more um, working within. The, the island itself. So with, within, within the metaphorical island being on the actual <laughs> island. Right. Whereas previously you could see the island depicted in the, in, in the, in the, the painting. So there, that's uh, exactly it. Cause, I, cause you know, being born on an island in, in Cuba is one thing and then going, I mean, there's quite a bit of a difference between Cuba and, and Governor's Island uh, in terms of besides the, the landscape and, and, and the experience, but uh, the idea of islands and motif and water are all part of your work uh, with architecture mixed in. I was curious as to, um, and, I, and I saw that you, you depicted the more of the historical and, and, and did not cover any of like the skyscrapers that you could sort of turn around and go in one direction and then look out the window, you'd see, you know, Wall Street, and you see all the, the skyscrapers there, but you didn't focus on that at all. No, no, yeah, no. But I think it is, um, when I spoke to Ernesto, when he first arrived for the installation at Governor's Island, um, and we, we, he had specifically asked for ground level um, exhibition space because he had this idea that the paintings were gonna act as windows within the architecture. Um, and when he actually got to Governor's Island and saw that uh, that cityscape that you're referring to, Brooke, it was really exciting for him. Um, and I think that's where that that the magic of the ambiguous um, sort of representation comes in, that he had no idea the way the juxtapositioning of the paintings was gonna work um, with the background beyond the, the actual structure. Right, right. So I can see that there's some comments in the chat, but I can't actually see them. So I'm not sure if anyone's uh, asking questions or not. Um, so I wanted to see if before we continued on, if there were actual any questions that on something that we talked about before, because I can see it on there on the bottom here. I'm going to just click on it to see what it is. Uh, Hotel Ola from Art Circus, very good. Uh, 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 oh, the role of light. Uh, we have a question about the from Elizabeth Condon on the role of light um, uh, in your works and how you depict light. Me. The light in my work. The light. The, yeah, the, the, the light. image. Image of light. So I've noticed this in some of your previous mm -hmm. works and especially um, some other uh, other works that you were. Uh, you have sometimes. Um, the way the, 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 you're depicting light, the, yeah. the light source, either the sun or sometimes there, there can be some conflicting things. And I, I've seen you do that more often. I'm not sure if it was, in, it wasn't in this painting, it was in a previous painting. Uh, that's not in the, not on our deck here, Elizabeth. But, but uh, the question is, is how, how, when, when do you think a lot about how you depict light within uh, you know, the light source coming in or, or is there is there something different with the way you think about that at all, or do you think about it, or do you just because 
because they're not real places, are they, you know, they're, they're, they're sometimes could be light sources coming in multiple places because it's fantasy. Yo, eh, that's a good question. Yo creo que esto más bien parte del proceso del trabajo me va pidiendo, va a venir luz por aquí, va a haber sombra, va a haber lluvia, va a haber dos focos de luz. Eso es parte del proceso que surge todo esto. Um, so, so this idea where I can capture um, the quality of light from, from multiple aspects or from multiple um, areas within the composition is something that's part of my process. It could be um, in a moment where it's raining or it could be light coming in from underneath the painting. And this is something that becomes part of, of my process is exactly that. Right. So, so yeah, okay. So that... I, I, that sort of addresses a little bit of the question, but I think the question was about like what the role of light is. If it if it plays a role, or is it just part of the whole um, fantastical landscape? I want to say imaginary landscape. Is, is it because it's not? It's it's a it's less of a a realist painting where a realist painting will really focus on how the light is showing on an object, like on a still life and things like this, where. Where yours are, uh, they 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 focus on, it, but sometimes they can they actually shift in the direction quite a bit sometimes. Yo creo que es la creación, lo que trato de hacer, de crear algo ilógico con un sentido más real, que tenga más lógica. Yeah. So so this is uh, what I try to achieve in the work is to present something that um, is illogical, but in fact, the way that I'm captivating the composition or capturing the composition um, is very formal, technically. Um, and I know that there's one, one uh, piece specifically, Ernesto, that we talked about this with Brooke. It was a sinister calm. And we don't, we don't have that in the deck, but this is one, the piece that has light coming in from two different directions in the painting. Um, and I approached you with this question and, and that was exactly your answer. I'm, I'm capturing these ambiguous um, landscapes and it's not about doing it right, say. Um, it's more about, like Brooke was saying, capturing these fantastic um, imaginative spaces. Uh, while we were at Nada House, one of the visitors actually walked into the room um, and stood in front of the corner painting and said, this is, this is a great example of magical realism. Um, and that, that was actually really great to hear that as, a, as an explanation for your compositions and your technical approach. Yeah, so, uh, and I think also in the, the chat, I, I, I guess that was Max that put it in there that we have the, di the, the digital catalog of the exhibition is up. Uh, so that if you wanted to look into the uh, a little bit more detailed views from what we have on the slides here of the just the works that are in at Nada House, you can click on that and get a detailed um, view of the, the works there. So I'm not sure how we're doing in terms of time. Yeah, I think we're we're running down here. Oh, I just wanted to jump in and ask a question if that's all right. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, no, just um, it's great to see the connection to yeah your earlier work and how you were looking at architecture and how the you started to engage with the architecture more directly with this newer work. And um, I guess, yeah, I'm interested. If, is that something you're going to continue to do in terms of how you interact, how the paintings interact with space going forward? I mean, it seems like that's like a you know, the mural size paintings and the sort of engaging with the windows as architecture has been a, a part of the recent developments in your work. And yeah, I'm curious if that will continue on. Uh, creo que es depende del, del mismo proceso que me va llevando o me va pidiendo si sigo por ese camino o no sé, que el mismo proceso me va llevando hacia donde quiere que vaya la hora. Es... So he, he's not sure of that yet because he likes to follow um sort of allow the process of the painting um and the specific project to guide him as to where um that project ends up 
Oh, that makes sense. Good, good question. Yeah, no, I, I think right now the current series has been following that for a while, but it may shift into a different uh, mode, depending on how the process goes. Or yeah, uh, yo creo que a visitar cuando fuimos al Met y a Whitney y a Free College, mm -hmm. creo que también me influenció ver esa sobra, ¿no? Um, que sentí un cambio en, yeah. en el proceso también de trabajo como ver que en un pequeño formato te podrían hacer un landscape con una perspectiva yeah. sin yeah. fin, no sé, algo más glorificado, más, más mágico, por así decirlo. So, um, Ernesto is saying that a good example is um, having the opportunity to visit the Frick and to visit the Matt um, while he was in New York. And of course, this was his first time entering the, these institutions. Um, a little bit of backstory, while he was in Cuba, he did explore these references, but with very limited resources. So a lot of the information he was capturing for his work was based from books or very limited um, uh, internet search time. He realized in going to these institutions that you can capture um, the same grandeur of, of, you know, one of these masterpieces or large scale works and now he's seeing certain masterpieces that were very small in format, and they still had the same impact as the larger works. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, he's trying to, to understand the power of the imagery. Um, and, I, and I guess it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the scale of it um, will give that power. Right. That makes sense. Well, yeah. I think you did a great job responding to the space with the scale and in the works that not a house or I mean they really feel so perfectly situated in those rooms and speak so much to the past but also I think to some of the future sort of ideas for what could happen on that island and I don't know I think it's a really yeah, yeah you just did a really great job addressing the the history there and i think thank you for uh, participating there yeah all right thank you thank, thank you for having us yeah. and uh and i think uh, i think that wraps it up here for us thank you ernesto thank you. all right thank and you thank you Beth, for thank you. your translation services and yeah thank you thanks all right bye go out and see it in yeah, person, see it. To see in, person. All all right. Right. Bye. 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 in person all right bye bye